Hello, I am Chema Cabrero, and I am in charge of the Military Vehicle Modeling Department. We are going to start a series of videos showing complete painting processes and effects on military vehicles using several Vallejo ranges. In today's video, we'll talk about the range of primers, their properties, and their practical applications. The Vallejo range of primers offers us highly adherent primers with 17 references and several packaging presentations. Its high adhesion properties offer the modeler the best base for the application of the following paint and subsequent weathering processes. The primer hue matches the base color perfectly, so no further base coating is needed. In this case, used directly with the airbrush, it covers all the details of the model without any problem. We can also use the primer layer not only as a base, but as the historical color of the vehicle, a correct starting point creating effects of volume, lights, and shadows. The references show a hue as exact as possible to the historical paint tones and shades. We must be especially careful to cover all the details of the model. The quality of Vallejo primers and their formulation guarantees great adherence to all types of materials, resin, plastic, and metal. The main character of our videos will be an old and well-known friend of many modelers, a T-34 1943 model. On our model, we observe several materials, resin turret, accessories, metal parts, and parts in different shades of plastic from other kits. Vallejo primers can be used with an airbrush without dilution. In this case, we use an Ultra HS airbrush with a 0.4 tip. We will apply several thin layers covering the plaster base and the resin turret.
When airbrushing with a tip of 0.2 or less, we should dilute the primer without any problem, using three parts of primer to one part Vallejo airbrush thinner. We will shake the mixture until obtaining a homogeneous appearance. With the help of a dropper, we will transfer the mix to a 17 milliliter bottle to use it more comfortably, closing it carefully. Now we are going to use an ultra airbrush with a 0.2 nozzle. We load the airbrush cup and proceed to apply thin layers on the model's surface using a pressure of 1.5 kilograms on the compressor because we are working at a short distance from the model. We will apply several thin layers with the airbrush, avoiding accumulation of paint. The finished model has a uniform, matte finish. If necessary, we can sand the layers of Vallejo primer to fix imperfections that it may reveal. It is very important to use very fine grit sandpaper from 400 to 1000 to obtain a correct finish. The reusable double-sided sandpaper from the Vallejo tools range are especially suitable for this process. We must wait 24 hours for the complete drying process Otherwise, the sanded surface will not present the right finish for applying new layers of primer. With smooth movements, we will sand the area that we need to fix using 400 grit sandpaper. Finally, we will carefully polish the area using the finest sandpaper, starting with 600 and finishing the process with 1000. Again, we apply thin layers of gray primer covering the sanded area. The finish must be perfectly integrated with the rest of the layers, unifying the surface of the model again. If we have worked correctly, it will not be possible to differentiate the sanded area from other areas of the model. We are now going to fix an area of the engine cover where we can see certain orange peel effect. Again, we will work with the finest sandpaper, 600 and 1000 to eliminate said undesired finish. We will use the primer base again directly in our airbrush, working at a short distance, in this case with one kilogram of pressure.
It is always better to apply thin layers instead of trying to cover the model with a single layer, thus avoiding undesired accumulations of paint. The model now has a uniform finish without imperfections on its surface. We will now start the priming process of our protagonist, starting with the resin cast turret. Vallejo primers dry quickly if applied in thin layers, but despite having a dry appearance to the touch in less than 40 minutes, the complete chemical drying process time requires about 24 hours. We will patiently cover the T34 resin turret. You can see how the primer covers it without any problem of adherence or final finish. Now we will apply the primer on the metal grill of the engine cover. In this case, we must be especially careful applying the primer. The thinner the layers, the better the result. We can see how the primer covers and unifies the several materials that are part of the model without any problem of opacity, adherence, or finish. Vallejo primers not only unify different materials that we could have used on our model, but also allows us to detect any imperfections or fit problems that need to be fixed. On some spots of the model, we must work closer to the surface, so we must adjust the pressure of the compressor between 1 and 1.5 kilograms. Its density and properties allow us to cover all materials, despite their heterogeneous tones. The finished model with the general primer coat already applied. You can make your questions and doubts in the comment section of the video.